Guys, before we get started, uh, we just want to say if you're not subscribed to our brand new newsletter, yeah. email newsletter, you should be because it's an absolute riot. Mm. And uh, it's it's been really, honestly, it's been really su- successful. I enjoy reading it every week. Uh, Jim's comics in there are hilarious. I think Nate writes it and Zach and it's really funny and we do suggestions every week of like stuff that we're listening to and watching and reading um we're also at we currently have 98,000 subscribers which is crazy um so if you're not subscribed subscribe uh get us up to that hundo so we can do a little celebration right little yeah 100k special edition um yeah man we we try to nail down all our, you know, media share, all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, there's, there's just a lot going on in there, and uh, we're really excited about it. TMGstudios.tv, if you want to subscribe. Please get us to 100K. Just get us there, dude. <laughs> and uh, thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, it's one of those. It's one of those. Now, you know what? If you're listening, it's the same. It's yeah, yeah. It's kind of the same. <laughs> Cody is frozen, so it's one of those. <laughs> now, let me just. Oh, and his internet dropped. So while Cody is reconnecting, I, let me just explain uh, why Cody is not on the ship, and we're not on the ship. Basically, uh. Cody is stuck in Montana, and you might be wondering, well, you have a UFO, why don't you just fly over to Montana and pick him up? Uh, Cody ate too much over the holiday break, and that's not a dig at his body, it's just that there's too much gas in his body. He actually, uh, we we had a doctor climb up a mountain to go into his secret Montana uh, location, and the doctor scanned his... Uh, incredibly bloated stomach and said, yeah, there's way too much gas. So if we beam Cody up from anywhere, he will die. He will explode. Um, the sheer amount of beans this guy ate um, over the holiday break is to an unreal degree. So, um, Wait, were you talking to me? <laughs> what? No, I'm, I was just explaining to everyone why, <laughs> why you're not here. I was gone for like literally three whole minutes. Yeah, I mean, well, I wasn't talking to you. I was just explaining to the people, you know, the situation why you're not on the ship and why we're not on the ship. All Cody ate were um, were beans. He was on a vegan diet for three weeks. It was just beans, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, beans. Hold on. This shit is like mad delayed again. This, I don't know if this is going to work. I hear myself in your Cody... headphones. <laughs> This internet is so awful that we can't. Okay, here, wait. Let me let me this move to the main floor. Can you go no video? Can you give me like five minutes? Can you minutes? go no video? Yeah, he's gonna figure it out. Um, in other news, both Bogdanov brothers died. <laughs> what? We'll be back after uh, this short break. <laughs> Podcast. This is today's free episode. If you want this episode ad-free and an extra bonus episode, you can find it right now on our Patreon.com. Holy fuck! Can you hear me? Can we hear the clip of that deer hit and get hit by that car? The mystery of the flying saucers may soon be solved. If you've never smoked weed at literal Woodstock, you're not a stoner. Goodbye. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. I'm gay as fuck. I should get my RC The so-called flying stuff. Look at all these fucking chickens. Malone Brown, you hear this whole? No. Malone Brown dick in your mouth? <laughs> no! 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 Please look at all the signs. Fashion your seatbelt and get ready for the base. There's no way I can down, downgrade the quality of Noel's camera or anything, can I? Nah, it's just uh, it's too nice. It's too nice, man. 
Mirror video. Oh, no, nah, don't worry about it. My camera is uh, top of the line, so it doesn't. It's not possible to downgrade. It does not do that. It it's because it's the upgrade, you know. Yeah. No, I meant from my side, so I didn't have to see your face. Yeah. Like, no, we it's pixelated it's, a little bit. It's just too good. It's always gonna be good, man. Sorry. It's way too much. Way too HD. Yeah, I know. I know. It's uh. So someone in a cabin would say, "You haven't seen technology what do you think? in a while." What do you think of the backdrop here? Doesn't this kind of look like a green screen? <laughs> yeah, dude, that's so cool that you spent the holidays in a barber shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wanted, I got this just to remind myself of the good old days, you know? Yeah. When With you JP. Act, yeah, yeah when you, and when you actually cut your hair. <laughs> and that too. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually the no, chair that is, they uh, use on Jeff's barber shop. Cody wanted it as a relic. Um, yeah, yeah. Now that <laughs> Bought it from him. <laughs> now that Jake is... Um, fought his way into pop culture and is a significant person in i think he's going to be time person of the year this year Mm -hmm. exactly um yeah it's for it's for when i have kids and i bring them here mm -hmm. and they walk upstairs and they're like what's the chair from daddy and i'm like uh you know jake paul and they're like world's best most famous fighter (laughs) no entrepreneur yes that's from when he bullied me in person no man. Next step for Jake is religion. He like cult is next. You know, like he'll yeah. be he'll be held up, not like actual cult. You know, like but he's gonna be held to like a Jesus level by the people of Ohio. Yeah, because <laughs> he's basically. That, you think that's how it starts? He yeah. He like he like uh, basically is becomes mayor of Chicago. I mean, not Chicago, Ohio. That's a state. Yeah. Doesn't have a mayor, but you get it. Where's yeah. what city is he from? Um, I think uh, Miami, Miami, Ohio. Is he? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what I do know is he's pro labor rights, and um, all the uh, liberal arts majors are having a really hard time with that right now. So, so yeah, explain explain this to me. What do you what exactly do you mean? Do you mean because he he did that he's whole like constantly. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, it's fine. He did that whole thing with Dana. He's like, I made a challenge to you. I'll retire from boxing if you, you know, I'll fight Jorge Masvidal in MMA if you pay fighters more money. And he's, he, in his video to Dana, or his response video, because it's like this whole back and forth. Let me not jump ahead. He, so he calls out Dana for paying the fighters 12K a fight. And he's like, you need to raise it to 50 and you need to give them health care. And, um, you know, uh, a lot of left people on Twitter lost their noodles because it was a it was a moral conflict inside. It's like it's Jake Paul, but he's really pushing for <laughs> labor rights here. God, God damn it. He's right. Yeah. I yeah. hate that he's right. Can you imagine Jake becoming like a leftist like fuck boy? Like his next picture, he's like naked, but he's covering his dick with like the communist manifesto manifesto <laughs> in his mirror. <laughs> and he's like just learning how capitalism is so bad for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Marxist now. <laughs> Dana, don't call me Jake. Call me the Marksman cuz I'm about the people. <laughs> Yeah. So you know. So the thing is, though, he's actually he is right. Right. Yeah, he is. He is about fighting. Yeah. Like it's very traditionally they are underpaid, over. They're overworked, sort mm-hmm. of. I mean, they they go out there, they risk their brains mm-hmm. every single time. Yep. And the people on the bottom don't get shit for it. No. the The story of Mighty Mouse, I think, is like the most horrible one. That what is that? He, well, you know, he saw how Stuart Little got so much fame, and he was like, I can do that too. So, um, he, you know what I'm saying, Stuart, all right, never mind. Um, no. Stuart Little? <laughs> Sorry. The Mouse movie? Uh, maybe. I don't know. What? You don't know who Stuart Little I have Little a bad is? memory, dude. Okay, that's fair. Um, anyway. <laughs> I don't remember the plot. <laughs> you remember the mouse, right? I remember, No. <laughs> It, it looks like a mouse, I'm guessing. Stuart Little is a mouse. He's a rat. Was he a boxer? Uh, well, no, Mighty Mouse is the boxer. Ratatouille. That's a good movie. 
Keep the, that running, I've man. seen that one. Damn. They got mice doing a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> mice are the... In uh, pop culture. Once once we started, like, charging producers and stuff for being pedophiles and all that, they were like, we can't fuck around with the kids anymore. Then they moved on to mice. They just did what, <laughs> you know, the, <laughs> the fashion industry did. Instead of having little kids put the product together, they're like, fuck it, let's, let's use these mice <laughs> instead. No, anyway, <laughs> that dude, Mighty Mouse, he fucking, um, he works construction, you know, like a fucking 50-hour-a-week construction job. He would get off his 12s and then um, go train at an MMA gym for, like, two hours, you know? Like, he'd get off of, like, what I imagine is, like, an overnight shift. Uh, and he did that forever. And, I, you know... I'm sorry, is this a, is this a cartoon? Is this an no, actual no, no, mouse? No, this is real. This is real. This, this is, is a real, real guy. His name is Mighty Mouse, and he's human. Yeah. Yeah, Demetrius okay. Johnson. Yeah. Okay, got it. And I'm I'm just uh he is like when I say he's the worst story, I just feel like having to work a construction job. He's actually a good story because he he ended up becoming like a UFC champion and all that and he he fights still professionally now. But some of my friends still train and they tell me about guys that are currently in the UFC and these dudes are fucking electricians and then they just train in their spare time. They go fight for their fucking twelve thousand dollars and then they go back to their electrician job like that next monday <laughs> so you know ufc's not not uh good in, in the way that they treat their fighters because they just keep all the money because like technically by that point you're a professional fighter like you're a pro fighter mm -hmm. that's trying to that yep. is putting in full-time work but not yep. making enough to support yourself so it's not like i was gonna say if you fight on the side and you have a job and you're fighting professionally, but you're not like doing it full time, then it's fine to have a job. Mm -hmm. But you're saying these guys are putting in full time hours into fighting and they're just like not getting paid enough. Yeah, dude. Imagine working 40 hours a week for three months. And then at the end of that, you get 12K. And then um, before tax, before you even pay your taxes on all that, or after you pay yeah. taxes on all that, you got to divvy that shit up, you know to all the people you hired to, like, enable you to win. If you even fucking win. Yeah. I actually think you get 12K even if you lose, but still. That's shit. You know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, Jake Paul. So, anyways. Literally, like, gonna replace AOC. Like, literally the next, <laughs> like, Democratic <laughs> representative for America, honestly. Um... <laughs> Um, I mean, that guy's literally. He's gonna, he's, gonna be, he's gonna post a picture on his Instagram, like you know, full of jewelry, like just bust down. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, have you ever seen a picture of him recently? Like the amount of fucking jewelry he wears, yeah. is nuts. But yeah. his his shirt, his t shirt, is gonna say "Eat the Rich." Yeah, and he's gonna be like, and he's not gonna get uh, yelled at for it. Everyone's gonna yeah. applaud him. And be like, oh yeah. my god, Jake is finally turning a corner. Hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's episode, BetterHelp Online Therapy. We talk about BetterHelp a lot on this show, and this month we are discussing some of the stigmas around mental health. For example, some people think you should wait until things are unbearable to go to therapy, but that isn't true. Therapy is a tool to utilize before things get worse, and it can help you avoid those lows. Yeah, you hear sometimes that mental health shouldn't be a part of a normal life, uh, but that isn't true because we take care of our bodies with the gym, doctor, nutrition, uh, so we should be focusing on our minds just as much. A lot of you know uh, I do therapy very regularly, um, and I would say that it's just uh, it's a way of checking in and you know being in control of those things that sometimes you don't realize are there. Uh, so BetterHelp, they're trying to offer you a customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and live chat sessions with a therapist uh, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Uh, it's definitely more affordable than some in-person th in therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Uh, give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. Um, this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp, and TMG listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash TMG. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash TMG. Man, I don't even, like, say this, like, to be, like, really that hateful, but that picture he posted with Drake, he looks deranged, man. <laughs> Wait, which one? Which picture? It was, like, on the Dat Piff Twitter, it was, like, Jake Paul with Drake. He looks fucking deranged, dude. <laughs> like, he looks like so? a mad scientist. Go, <laughs> let me look this shit up on my phone. He, Can you bring it up, Luke? 
Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> he literally looks <laughs> like... He's got some... It might have been the same picture that somebody sent. I don't know. It was a collage or a carousel, sorry. And one of them, like, I his new it. haircut. I got it right which here. Which I don't even... I hate that I just that I know about Jake Paul's haircut. Kind of ironic, honestly. <laughs> but whatever haircut he's got, he's got like that face tattoo now that sort of like goes in. It's like an ear tattoo. It's like a oh, skull, whatever, right here. Yeah. And it like bleeds into his face a little bit. And then he's not, he now got this crazy. <laughs> Can you like zoom in on that a little bit? <laughs> I just took Cody out of whatever point he was trying to make. He just got like. <laughs> Holy fuck, the eyes? Dude, I'm saying, like, he looks like he's trying to kill the Powerpuff Girls. He Seriously. <laughs> like, like, he has a giant bomb in his basement with the atomic symbol on it. And it's like, you know, he's just down there like, I will take over the world. It's honestly a pretty dope look. <laughs> yeah, fucking coked out I'm philosophy a fan, dude. professor. It's I'm a fan. Hard. <laughs> he converted me. Yeah, he's converted a lot of people, man. Um, that's good. So yeah, you're new Democratic good. candidate of uh, 2024, Jake Paul. Everybody, um, speak. Oh, uh, that's the other thing I wanted to bring up. So Eat like the rich Dana responded to him. And it's like this long video. Play it. He, yeah. Play right. it. Yeah. Play it. I need to see it. You said I do cocaine. That's like the. <laughs> That's what you're going to take away from this video. Jake, you never responded to oh, the challenge. Okay, I saw a clip of this before. You but publicly I stated that I use cocaine. I do not. So I told you, you could randomly cocaine test me for the next 10 years. <laughs> I believe that you're a cheater. Can and we, I believe can we that you use steroids. It? I'm sorry. Cocaine test me? <laughs> <laughs> you can't what test me that? for the others. But you can test me for a cocaine. <laughs> you want a if cocaine test? You can find a me? cocaine test. <laughs> if you can even find a test that only does cocaine, you can use it because that's the only thing you, you can test me for. Cocaine <laughs> test me. Like this guy runs a billion dollar company <laughs> that drug tests its employees as part of the fucking work. Says cocaine test me. <laughs> it's so stupid, but it's so. Funny I honestly to want to know if that exists. Yeah, if you can just test get, only for that. Just what would they do? What would they do? They'd let you, someone would come up and smell your nose. That's what they do. <laughs> they put their nose up to your nose and <laughs> and smell. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, this guy's been doing coke. No, you know what they do? They um, they have like uh, like some type of like substance that's like like really dry. And they just rub it on your nostrils to see if you get irritated, you know, just to see if you yeah, get, hey, dude, what, you know, like <laughs> no, 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 they, no, 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 it's they, they make out with them and see if their mouth goes numb. Oh yeah, there <laughs> you go, there you go, there it is, yeah, <laughs> bingo. <laughs> it's some dude, in, some dude in a like a you know scrubs. He's like, all right, dude, we got it. You said, you said, any any time for the next ten years. We can cocaine test you. This is what a cocaine test is. So sorry, I gotta. We gotta smooch. Pucker up, dude. We're French kissing. I was just thinking of the cocaine test. Some guy walks by with like a small mirror and a credit card, and he just taps it, just like out of earshot. And if you like, if you perk up, it's like, oh. <laughs> got him. Yeah, it's like a you jingle keys next yeah. like near him. Yeah, got him. Someone goes within ten feet of him and jingles some keys. What's up? <laughs> yeah, we going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all you say. Oh, right now. Oh, fuck! <laughs> what do you mean right now? What are we doing right now? Oh, you. I thought we were like going to the gym. Hmm. You're gonna drive me somewhere <laughs> to smoothie to Jamba Juice <laughs> to, sm to smoothie juice. Smoothie juice. Cocaine test me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let Dana finish. Let Dana finish. <laughs> it's a Scantron. It's a Scantron <laughs> test. That's a <laughs> cocaine test. There are three girls in the bathroom, and you only have two <laughs> lines. How do you split them up? <laughs> it's a I don't know. I don't know. I don't do cocaine, so I don't know this. It's a, that's the written portion? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to write a little paragraph. <laughs> two, two girls 
nostrils are traveling at different speeds along the same line. <laughs> How long until their noses meet? <laughs> God damn it. Dude. I don't know, but they're wasting my blow. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> You've tested positive for cocaine. <laughs> I don't know, but these bitches are wasting my blow. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. You've tested positive. Oh, fuck. Fucking fuck. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Now let Dana finish. Whatever the so hell you want to say. I want to randomly steroid test you for the next two years. And that thing that you came out with today, nobody on earth thinks that you really wrote that. You're too stupid. And for those of you that don't know, if you've ever watched one of his fights and you see when they do the stare down, the guy that's standing in the middle with the warlock nose and the big warlock ward on his face, apparently that's his manager. And that guy used to be an accountant for me. <clears throat> and let's just say this. He no longer works for me. And I think he's a scumbag. But if you two think that you can do it better than we do, uh, you know, we're doing this whole thing wrong. You could treat the fighters better than we do. Knock yourself out. <clears throat> Go start your own business. It's easy to do. Go st get the warlock on it. The warlock could get it started for you. What you and the warlock should be focused on is your business. You're tanking. You can't sell pay-per-views. You know, no, yeah, you're calling out Jorge Masvidal because he's a pay-per-view superstar. Nate Diaz. Conor McGregor. Mike Tyson, these are all superstars. You're not. You can't sell pay-per-views. So you do whatever the hell you want to do. I'm ready to roll, buddy. I don't use cocaine. Do you use steroids? <laughs> Let's do this, Jake. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Yeah. That was a good, uh, honestly, a pretty great retort. Yeah, but then, you As, know, people kind of picked it apart. Um, well, I mean, he kind of weaved in and out of his <clears throat> point, you know? Yeah. Kind of got lost in the wart thing and the accountant thing. And, you know, it was kind of all over the place, but I'd say, I'd say pretty solid ending. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I love how people in the replies were saying, another typical ad hominem reply from Dana White. Like, bro, you're going to walk up to fucking... You master tomato and be like, don't make fun of me. That's ad hominem. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, dude. Master tomato? Is that what you just called him? That's what I call him, yeah. That's good. He's like, he's like the final tomato, you know? Yeah, I like that. Uh, Jake he's, he, he says that Jake's using steroids, but there's no way that Dana's not also using steroids. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, that's not part of the cocaine test. Yeah. Fucking... Jake, so Jake, in his reply, his reply is actually funny. Uh, and I know it sucks to admit, but it's funny. And he like, I, it, it's like three minutes long, so I'm just going to you know paraphrase it. But in between all of Jake's statements, he just uses the like a sliver of Dana saying, I use cocaine. And it has this <laughs> awful like cocaine, P like PNG pinned to his nostril. He'll be like, Dana. You don't pay your fighters enough. I use cocaine. <laughs> and so, uh, damn, J dude. He's dude, he goes as far as to say, he's like, me on steroids? Look at me. I'm a fat fuck. And he stands up and he <laughs> grabs his stomach. He's like, look at me. And he's smacking his stomach. He's like, I'm fat as shit. Jake said that? Yeah. And then he's like, come, funny. He's like, come steroid test me. I don't care. And then, you know, I use cocaine. And then here's the funniest, best part, is when Jake talks about, pay, like, fighter pay, he goes, Dana, you are one of the most selfish, capitalistic motherfuckers. And I went, whoa. Whoa. Big words for Jake Ball, bro. Damn. And I just thought it was funny he's calling him, like, a capitalistic motherfucker when he just rinsed everyone. <laughs> is capitalistic even a word? It's just capitalists, isn't it? Yeah. Could something be capitalistic? I think so. I don't think so. I don't think that's a word. Capitalistic. Let's let's think about that for a second. You, you, let's you, break it down. You walk by a school and you're like, what if all these kids made shoes? 
capitalistic thought, right? That would be a capitalist thought. Oh. Could, could something be like, you know, on the edge? Like, yeah, you're being a little bit capitalistic right now. Oh, Luke's pulling it up. Capitalistic. It is a word. God fucking damn it. Yeah, man. I'm telling you. Supporting or based on the principles of capitalism. <clears throat> yeah, so you're just going to have to vote for Jake Paul in 2024. That's just... Just accept it it's, it, it. It's a little bit hypocritical of him. I know. That's to call why someone funny. else capitalist, capitalistic. <laughs> Is it not? Yeah. I thought that was kind of funny. But, you know, he... That's he, pretty good. On his fight card, you know, this he... Guy's pay- selling, this guy's selling, like, potentially set up fights for 50 bucks a pop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but he pays those fighters well, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But you can't call Jake selfish. Is there anything more fucking capitalist than pay-per-view? Um, yeah. The whole thing is based on promotion and sales. Yeah. And convincing people to watch and hype. And there's nothing more capitalist than that. Yeah. That was that was the only part where I was like, that's a bit of a... If Jake left that out, you know, 10 out of 10 reply. Hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode, HelloFresh. Listen, with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. Uh, That's why it's America's number one meal kit, baby. Yeah, the new year is a great time to focus on what's most important to you, whether it's saving money by ordering less takeout, learning to cook, or prioritizing your wellness. HelloFresh is here to help with endless options to make cooking at home simple and enjoyable. HelloFresh cuts back on time spent in the kitchen so you can spend it on your other resolutions with meals ready in around 30 minutes or less, plus quick and easy meals, including 20-minute recipes and low-prep, easy cleanup options. They provide an even faster route to putting food on the table. Don't forget dessert, dude. Oh, oops. Satis- satisfy your sweet tooth with seasonal <laughs> limited time goodies like Dunkaroo's cookie dough or vanilla delight cheesecake. Mm. I love I love I love the bibimbap. It only takes 30 minutes to cook and it's delicious. There's a reason it's in the HelloFresh Hall of Fame cuz that actually is one of the best ones in my opinion. <laughs> Anyways, tell them, tell them where they can get it, dude. They can go to HelloFresh.com slash TinyMeat16 and use code TinyMeat16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash TinyMeat16 and use the code TinyMeat16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Mm. Mm. But I love how both of them, you know, based on our conversation last week, about designer steroids and stuff, Jake could probably have afford designer steroids. So I think it's so funny uh, now when I see fighters say like, oh, I'll, I'll take a test anytime, anywhere. I'm like, oh, if you're getting designer steroids, of course you will. You don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I listened to a little bit of that more plates, more dates guy on Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. They, they touched on that briefly about how many types of steroids there are. Mm-hmm. I guess you can just, maybe this is what they said if I'm remembering correctly, but you can just like alter chemically one steroid a little bit and then it won't show up on tests. Yeah. But it'll yeah. basically do the same thing. Is that what you mean by designer steroids? Yeah. Yeah, if you like have a lab and you're just like, yo, give me trend, but like make it not trend. Yeah. And they're like, okay. Um, so speaking of capitalism and, uh, you know, playing the markets, big old rest in peace. Two? The Bog Brothers. Did they actually die? Yeah. Both of them at the same time? From COVID. They were 72. No way. Rest in peace. Damn. They didn't die under the needle? Uh, no, I don't think so. Like for some cosmetic procedure? No, I think That's they... That's kind of how I assume they'd go out. Yeah. Nope, they, uh, they crashed it one last time. Wow. Damn. So if you're a long-time listener, you all know... Bogdanov, he's not buying. Um, it's sad, honestly. It is. It's the end of an era. Tumpit. R.I.P. Yeah. Crush it. <laughs> Max Mofo had the funniest tweet because the first Bog brother passed and then they announced the second one. They died within a week of each other and they both had like COVID complications. That's a <laughs> little he, poetic. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And They're twins. 
<laughs> and Max Mofo tweets, oh no, not again. <laughs> <laughs> like for the second one? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh, I hate this. They, wait. they made a sequel? Oh, I hate this movie. Oh, no. <laughs> R.I.P. Bogdan Bogdanov two. I guess. Yeah. They're twins, right? Yeah, they were. Yeah. What What did they do again? What was their original? They were like job science or TV hosts or some shit, and then they did all that plastic surgery, and then they took over Ethereum. Ethereum. Yeah, they took it over. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Classy. Yeah. But no, nah, they they were like they were seriously like TV hosts. Huh. I think they were maybe on the level of like I don't know, uh, probably like Mariah Carey or something. For what fame? Yeah, and just you know, they're the French Mariah Carey influence. Yeah, There's French people listening to this right now, like sacre bleu. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, yeah, dude. Sad times. Damn, that's sad, man. R.I.P. COVID's a bitch. I like how we said, we, what do we do? We applause, applause the end of COVID. Applauded, yeah, sorry, the end of over. COVID. And now it's like fucking, fucking up everything. Now it's back. It's back. I mean, it, it could still potentially be the beginning of the end. It could still be. <clears throat> Knock on wood. Yeah, that has that has but two it, meanings. But it it is what it could be the beginning of like the end of like oh this the is world. where it ends. Yeah, or we're on our way. Well, I'm saying that it it is spreading unbelievably quickly. Like mm-hmm. everyone I know is getting it. I honestly think but, I, I had it, even though I tested negative. Why? I just never felt that sick before. Like that. Wait, when did you have it? When, uh, oh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, in December. I, the body aches were on a level I've never felt like in my life. I've never had that degree of body ache. Um, huh. But I tested negative, and I didn't like lose <clears throat> taste or smell. And anyone else I know that had it is said like uh, they had some of the COVID symptoms. But anyway, you know a lot of people with it. You were saying. Did you only test once? Tested twice. Did a, and both um, times negative? Mm-hmm. Like in the heat of the symptoms? Um, trying to remember. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Huh. Damn. Weird. Yeah, I you took, might have had it. I took one people, test I going. That ha- I took one test going in, and then like at the peak of it, I took a test. <clears throat> it's negative. Yeah, it's just fucking everywhere. <clears throat> it's everyone's getting it. And, but I mean, most people that I know that have been like boosted and everything, they say it's pretty mild. Yeah. So, um, that's what I'm saying. And I think there's data now that shows that Omicron is like, compared to how fast it's spreading and how many cases there are, there is a less ratio of hospitalizations and death. So Mm. that's good. Did you get your boost? I got boosted. What'd you get? Um, uh, I think Pfizer. Yeah, I yeah, I got to get it. I haven't gotten it yet. Um I got boosted, but I still think that the pharma industry is uh fleecing us for something. I don't know what. Okay? I don't know what. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, you see so you get people who don't believe in it and don't take it. You get people who believe in it and don't and do take it. I believe in it and I don't believe in it. You you take it but you don't believe in it. Yeah, I'm the Or you all- do believe in it. I'm the ultimate fence sitter, you know, just so. Okay, I like that. I, I'm hedging my bet. I don't believe in it. <clears throat> I'm basically playing um, black and red on a roulette table, just praying double zero doesn't hit. That's that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. So, yeah, I don't know. I yeah, thought, no, that's. I'm just waiting for you to say something so I can say something and then just keep. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just. I don't. I'm like for some reason. I'm fucking scared to get it. The booster. I, I'm gonna get it, but I just. I'm scared. I don't know why. I, I was too. I hate vaccinations. I'm not an anti-vaxer, but I just hate them. So maybe I am. 
you know? Yeah. I, I hate mean, needles. I'm an anti-vaxxer. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm vax-phobic. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I don't care what's in it. It's just like the going in my arm process. I don't like that. That's the part I hate. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I don't know if it's going to, you know, fuck my kids up or whatever. See, that's what I'm saying. I There was an article that came out that said Johnson & Johnson is is effect if you get the Johnson and Johnson booster, which is insane to go in twice for that shot, but that it is effective against Omicron. So I was like, fuck, maybe I'll just do that. But, mm. and then just get torn to shreds yeah. online for getting the, you know, the least cool boot vaccination twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I love that whole part. I always bring this up when everyone's like, get a vaccine. If you can get one, get one. Everyone got Johnson and Johnson. And then the whole, elite of the world it's like oh you want to got the android of vaccines <laughs> you're gonna die <laughs> oh you're I'm so saying. fucking poor you're gonna die yeah <clears throat> yeah so even if i got that as a booster if someone asked me you got your booster i'd be like nah yeah yeah you're better off lying yeah because if i say yes they're gonna ask which one <laughs> johnson and johnson you may as well oh, i think i got it at all i think i got a johnson and johnson <laughs> <laughs> which one I think it was the one you same one you got. You know, Big Pharma and Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, you should do it live on the pod. <laughs> you got J and J twice? <laughs> J and J and J and J? Oh my god, this guy got J and J twice. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fucking scene for a TV show right there. Just like a row of people in a fucking full screen esque office. Just so you know, shared desks, plastic environment, and then you go, yeah, I got the Johnson & Johnson booster. And then the whole role goes, you got Johnson & Johnson? <laughs> what an idiot! Yo, Chris, you won't believe what this guy just said! What did he say? You're a fucking loser! <laughs> Starts spitting on you. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's hard a, out here. Here's a bad meme. Take the scene from Game of Thrones when what's her face was walking through the town and they're throwing poop and carrots at her. <laughs> saying, saying shame, you know? Shame. <laughs> and it's like me after I get the Johnson and Johnson <laughs> booster. Booster. Shame. <laughs> you carrot, you idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what'd you do for New Year's, man? <laughs> How was it? Dude, I didn't do, didn't really do shit, honestly. I've, I've been not really doing anything, honestly. I've just been reading a lot. I read five books five. in the last month. Yeah. What books did you read? Um, I read, uh, I read, the first one I read was the WeWork book. Mm. I remember, I think we talked about the documentary, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, we've yeah. talked about him multiple times, but yeah. I read the book. Nice. Which was way more detailed than the documentary, so it was actually really interesting. Mm. It's a good book. Uh, it's called Billion Dollar Loser, <laughs> which she is like, Jesus, coming for, <laughs> coming for the throat straight away from the title. <laughs> that book came out, um, and that's why Jeff Bezos is so pressed to be cool. He's getting buff. Yeah. Getting yeah, a, exactly. A girlfriend yeah. half his age and shit. He's like, I, I, I will not end up. I'm not. That. I'm not that. <laughs> um, and then I read uh, the I read the Anti Social Network by Ben Mesrick, which is about the GameStop thing. Mm. So that was actually kind of interesting. Just uh, I don't know, learning about it from start to finish. What exactly happened? Um, he writes like fiction, though. It's uh, weird. It's an it's a real story, but he writes it like from the perspective of like different characters, which are just like normal people that invested in GameStop. Mm. But he writes it like Jake woke up and looked around his dark room, and it's like that didn't happen. You I know what I'm saying? I couldn't <clears throat> deal with that fan fiction ass exactly stock market story. Get out of here, man. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> still interesting. And then I read the psychology of money, which is about, uh, that's actually a really good one. I suggest, I, I, I put that in the newsletter. Actually, I recommend that to people, um, just about people's emotions towards money and why people make bad decisions mm. with their money. Mm. I thought it was good. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to follow anything it says in there. <laughs> 
but it's good. It, I, it, other people should do it. Yeah. I'm going to buy more cars. Yeah. Oh, don't get you know me what I'm started. Saying? Don't get me started. No, I mean, yeah, I, I was talking about, you know, like, uh, you know, McLarens and stuff like that. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Get as many of those as possible. As many. As many as you can. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and go into a lot of debt too. Definitely going to debt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then what else did I read? The most recent one I read was the. It's by Ray Dalio. It's called like the Changing World Order. Or oh something yeah, like that, that. Dude. It's about how, Yeah, yeah. It's about how China's rising as the next world's power, and the U.S. is on the decline. It's yeah, honestly, kind of sad. But uh, but enlightening for sure. Yeah, Ray Dalio, um, that guy, he's um, he's had some interesting points over the years. Have you listened to like a podcast with him or anything? No, nah, I've like uh, I've just seen little like articles and like clips of him, and I've dug into some of it. Um, uh, he was kind of explaining. I remember this thing I was reading about how he was explaining the development of like leftist ideals versus right. And he was, I believe he was saying in history, uh, for the most part, like uh, across all like human um, civilizations and stuff, I think he was saying that leftist ideals have a tendency to spread faster. Uh, it was like related to like economics and how. Um, they develop faster because uh, the majority of people are at like a certain like income level or something like that. I'm probably butchering that like a bazillion percent, but um, yeah, I don't know. He definitely uh, uh, he he seems to know a lot of shit. I don't know if he's. A, I always wonder like, is this guy like uh, crazy or does he know oh a lot God. about history? I mean, read this book. It is so incredibly detailed. <clears throat> it's fucking insane. <laughs> it's like 750 pages of like just information about history I and mean, other damn. times. It, it, basically, the gist is like this has happened four times before. Mm. It's happening right now. It's nothing bad or good. It's just the way <clears throat> yeah. history unfolds. Yeah. And now we're declining and China's going to be the next superpower. That's it. Damn. Yeah. Whatever. As long and as then we I read this TikTok. one called Atomic. What'd you say? As long as we get TikTok still, I'm fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as long as we can veg out. Yeah, that's all good. And what's the, yeah. what's the next book? <laughs> Atomic Habits, which is kind of like... <laughs> it's really self-helpy. Nice, dude. Uh, self-help, self-help books are cool. Like, they teach you good stuff, but sometimes I just feel like a fucking loser reading those things. <laughs> is that bad? No, nah, I mean, what, what, what about it makes you feel lame? Like the whole underlying narrative, I guess, is like being who you envision yourself being and blah, blah, blah. And just that verbiage in itself mm. makes me feel like feel like I'm at like a, I don't know, who's the guy that does conferences, Tony Robbins or whatever. Yeah. You know, it makes me feel like I'm at a conference, one of his conferences. Sure. Yeah. Well, But it's actually a really good book just about developing, teaching you how to develop the habits that you want to develop. Yeah. Just uh. in small steps. Cool. I think it's a good book. I think self help is it definitely has that capacity to feel a little bit like, ugh. you know. I think you. I think whenever I, I read self help books, I'm always like, mm. so this is the part my parents missed. <laughs> like, oh, this is the stuff they didn't teach me. Nice, dude. I feel like the wording is it, it makes you feel that way. Like the wording is like almost like, um, like here. Are think like instructions like you didn't receive or something like almost like the way they're spelled out. It feels like it's almost calling you dumb. Like that's sometimes yeah. how I felt reading the self help book. Like the way yeah. it's phrased, it's it's sometimes it's like okay, you little moron. Have you ever thought about your own version of yourself? You're like, well, f okay, fuck you. Like you don't see. I I kind of think the opposite. I think that the words that they use and the way that they phrase things makes you feel really good. So you get that same feeling that you get when you wake up on January 1st and you're like, I'm committed to my goals this year. Mm. And you spend three weeks really heads down committed. And then you 
completely lose track and momentum and you feel like shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it makes you feel like that high in the first couple of weeks where you're like, I know this is fucking fake and I know I'm not going to be able to stick to this. Mm. Mm. So you have to be very careful, I think, when you're writing a self-help book to make it actually digestible in terms of something and actionable in a way that people can just do it no matter what. And I think this one is that. It's just some of the languages I used was like, like I said, like, be who you want to be. And it's like... <laughs> That's just oh, marketing like words. That. <laughs> Sorry, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. When I read some, like the few self help books I've read, I sometimes feel like they're a little bit patronizing. But I see what you mean. Like the, yeah, like they're like, you're a limitless being, and yeah, and you're like, yeah, fuck yeah, I am limitless. <laughs> you're literally the incarnate of the universe. What is stopping you? Fuck yeah, hell yeah, I am. I'm the best. <laughs> I'm the fucking best. Hey, dude, you gonna fucking order? Y- you've been at the the desk. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Pull up the AirPods. Sorry, audiobook. You know how it is. Uh, I'll get a three piece Chick Fil A. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wasn't there like an article about how this food like gives you like cancer or something? <laughs> yeah, I want that one because it seems like it tastes <laughs> really good. Yeah, dude. No, it, it's. It was, it's actually a really good book, and uh, I've been running a shit ton, too, which feels good. Getting back into, like, performance running. <clears throat> just Hell yeah, man. Distance and speed and stuff like that, which is good. It just gives me little incremental victories, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. I've actually been able to lift consistently, and that's been, that's been good. It's been... Yeah, how long have you been doing that for? I've been so on and off, but the past like three months, I've really been able to like push my body and this is going to sound really corny, but truthfully push myself in ways I haven't before. Um, so I would say like consistently now, only about like a month just because uh, all the construction that was going on in my place, I've just been so like in and out of it. But yeah, the past month has been crazy. I can do fucking archer push-ups, which I've been like really trying to get to, and I got to that. What is that? What is an archer push-up? It's like it's like stages you to be able to do one-handed, basically. So it's like your your hands are like kind of spread, and then like you're kind of like dipping down to one side, and then you press up, and then you come down to the other side, and then you press up. Mm. Uh, they're hard as shit, but yeah. Um, so that's been cool. Um, I'm finally back to deadlifting full plates and i'm almost there on squat i've been really really ginger on squat um but yeah it's uh it's been good nice dude hey guys we want to take another quick break to thank another sponsor of this show which is liquid Liquid death Death, one of our favorite brands liquid death uh you may start noticing there are strange tall boys of beer in the bottled water section of your local stores what the heck is that well, it's not beer. It's actually mountain spring water from the Alps, and it's called liquid death. Yeah, why is this water called liquid death? Well, because it will brutally murder your thirst, and their infinitely recyclable tall boy cans are helping to bring death to plastic bottles. They also donate 10% of their profits from every can sold to help kill plastic pollution. Most plastic you throw in a recycling bin actually just gets sent to a landfill because it's not profitable to recycle. Aluminum is infinitely recyclable and actually profitable for recycling facilities. I like Liquid Death a lot. I love it, actually. I drink it all the time. I wish I had it right now, but I don't have any here in Montana. Um, (laughs) I like to make it look like I'm drinking beer all the time. Yeah, and it actually tastes good. Um... It tastes yeah. amazing from a can. It really does. <laughs> Drinking freezing cold water from a can is very refreshing. It just hits different. So get It hits a little different. So go get yours. You can get free shipping on all water and merch at liquiddeath.com slash TMG. That's liquiddeath.com slash TMG. Or grab some at Whole Foods, Sprouts, and 7-Eleven. Yeah, grab some of the merch. It's designed by this guy that I know who's a friend, I would say. And it's all very good. You know, I used to wear the fucking hat all the time. It's yeah. great. Liquid Death. What'd you do for New Year's Eve? Fuck all. Yeah. Yeah. Um Fuck all. Fuck all. Uh Spork came over. Uh Cash and Alex just Spork. <laughs> Spork. AKA Spock. Uh they came over and uh we just fucking Bro, we watched Shrek 2. Which Let's I, go. Dude, 
When's the last time you watched Shrek 2? When it came out, probably. Uh, I don't think I've seen it since then. I never watched it. And I felt when we watched it, I was like, first of all, I was dying laughing. I didn't realize how uh, how many adult concepts are in that movie. Um, and how a lot of inappropriate shit, too. <laughs> like, like what? Like there's one shit where they're like, you know, at the end when they're going to, you know, when Shrek is going to save Fiona and uh, uh, he's he's getting help from like Pinocchio and... Pinocchio. Pinocchio. <laughs> Pinocchio. Nuz is going a mile a minute. Pinocchio. And uh, the three blind mice. So there's a scene where Donkey and What's Sh- up with mice? See? What is up with I'm this? Saying. So there's a scene where Shrek and Donkey are like tied up and they're going to bail them out. And and they're they're like in a well. And at the top of the well is a is a small like grate. And they're trying to blow it up with dynamite. And one of the blind mice goes to light it and he like strikes a match and he holds it in the air and then he runs up to the wick, but he's blind, so he doesn't know where he's going. So he just like walks and he falls through the hole. And I'm like, that's not fair. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to laugh at that. You can't, you can't put that shit in, dude. It's not, it's not, it's not right. That's ableist. I mean, it kind of is, dude. Tasking a blind mice like, yo, we're going to blow some shit up. Go light it on fire. That's, you know, you can't do that. That's an innocent <laughs> joke. It is, but it was also like, you know, whatever. So he like falls through the shit, you know, and I'm and I'm laughing. And then, um, then when they get through the the gate and they got Pinocchio there, <laughs> Pinocchio. They're trying to reach out to Shrek and they need Pinocchio's nose to. And they're like, dude, tell a lie. And then uh, he was like, oh, I'm not wearing women's underwear. <laughs> and then his like nose grows. And then they're like, what color is it? And then. <laughs> They're like saying all this shit and then they lift up his fucking pants and he has a thong on, dude. Dang. <laughs> like it's she. I was like, bro. Damn, Pinocchio. Shrek 2 predicting TikTok trends way ahead of, you know, way ahead. It, it reminded me of all those TikTok trends where like dudes like throw their like outfits on the bed and then the last thing they throw is like, <laughs> is like a thong. <laughs> which funny. by the way by the way man i just have to say remember when i joked about doing an ad read in the middle of a tiktok that's like a uh, huge ass trend on tiktok now it was during the, the one because when we were when i was bagging on or i was making fun of the demilios and i was like what is a fun you know and i was like you were like, what's a funny ad read that Charlie could do in the middle, or, yeah, Charlie could do in the middle of her TikTok, and I was like, Blue Chew. People, people are doing that shit now. Like, they're doing TikToks, and then they're doing ad reads in the middle, like, fake ad reads. And what? Then, oh, fake. They're fake. Yeah, yeah, fake, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's only a matter of time before they're real. I know, but then they're But, doing- dude, that was, that was one of the ones that, <laughs> one of the, remember that meme that you showed me of, of the video game? clips yeah. where they like edit in the pictures yeah and then in that one it was just an entire ad for a hyundai oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> like the whole thing it was like three minutes long yeah, yeah it was a entire clip. ad yeah. <laughs> yeah he's about to kill someone it's a three minute ad for the truck and then right after the end of the fucking commercial he kills the guy yeah yeah like fucking sick kill i don't know what's up with that <laughs> fucking Sick truck. What's dude. up with that Hyundai ad? Yeah, what's no? I think they were like sick truck, man. What's up with that ad at the beginning for like that <laughs> shooting game? Oh yeah, it was good. That's good. <clears throat> um, but yeah, and I'm trying to remember what else was crazy in Shrek Two. Oh, uh, fucking, uh, like the whole. Do you remember the plot of the of the movie? Uh, no, I don't remember. It's basically like, um. Uh, Fiona's like fairy godmother is like sort of preying on her family and she's trying to force a marriage between her son and Fiona so she's like trying to get Shrek out of there 
And so there's like this potion and, you know, sh- uh, the it's like they they fucking do. They slip it into Fiona's drink, which is crazy. <laughs> and then it's like if she kisses someone before midnight, she'll fall in love with that person. And then her the fairy godmother's son just straight up runs up to Fiona and just fucking just sexually assaults her in a way. He just fucking kisses her on the mouth. And they know that they slipped the shit in her drink. <laughs> That's just, dark. Yeah, I was like, bro, what? She's going to fall in love with him forever. Like, That's dark. It's more than a kiss. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I wouldn't say that's an adult theme. I would say that. <laughs> that's just fucked up. I mean, yeah. Yeah, right? And then... Uh, Why did you guys decide to watch Shrek 2? Uh, We ran Shrek 1 in the background while we ate some pizza. And then I think someone was like... Alina was like, put on Shrek 2. And I said, why? We were asked the first one. It's just going to be... Because it's the sequel? Yeah, I know. But I didn't. I thought it was just going to be like one, but just, you know, another feel good, like who cares? And then Cash was like urging. He's like, no, 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 dude, put on Shrek 2. It's a, it's a, it's a surprisingly funny movie. And then we put it on and, all, and just things are happening. I'm like, holy shit, this is crazy. It made me want to watch it again. Is there a Shrek 3? There is, but it doesn't even matter. I understand now all the uh, inspiration for all those like Shrek is love cartoons and stuff. And uh, I even I even get all the like, you know, the the pseudo like or like all the Shrek porn that you see on Twitter. <laughs> I don't I don't follow those accounts. So <laughs> I mean, they're just good reply memes, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. Like. You, you shut the fuck up. You know what I'm talking about. I've seen some good. Sh- You've no, seen, seen the naked Fiona, dude. You've seen uh, the naked Fiona. You have. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't but know what you're talking about. I'm just saying, if you watch Shrek 2 and like, I don't know, maybe slightly inebriated, whatever, just like slightly like a little fucked up and you watch Shrek 2, it's just like you, you're like, oh man, this is, this is kind of, some of this shit is kind of heavy. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And then, watched, oh, and then uh, the best. No, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. You go ahead. No, you go no, ahead. Please, no, please, dude. Uh, be, be my guest. <laughs> I was just quickly going to say, I put on the Miley and P. Davis. Yes, that's thing, what I was going to say. Like, that's, I watched that too. We wanted a countdown, <laughs> but the fucking broadcast was behind. And uh, we're oh, like, no. we're like waiting. And we're like, oh, we got like a minute and a half left. <laughs> and someone lights a firework off in our neighborhood. And then I look at my phone. I'm like, we fucking missed it. <laughs> no way. It just killed the vibe on everything. That sucks. Yeah. And then we we're all like, man, what? And then we just, we kind of like watched a few people like fireworks in my neighborhood. And then we're like, all right, later. <laughs> so was it midnight? Yeah, yeah. I went to bed at 11. And then Kelsey woke me up at midnight. And I was like, oh, oh. she was like, Happy New Year. I was like, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> then we kissed and then I went back to bed. Nice. Yeah. But I did watch the Miley Pete thing. It was it wasn't actually I mean it wasn't bad. I don't know. Better than, than the other ones, I thought. Pete Davis was Pete Davis is funny, like I think. You know? Yeah, there, I mean It's really easy to be corny in those scenarios and he seems to Keep it real. Yeah. I think uh, most New Year's Eve things are stupid. Did you see buddy um, Andy Cohen on the CNN? Uh, No, I didn't watch that one. uh, So I caught like a glimpse of it because I was just looking for something to like, like earlier in the night, I was looking for something to put on to just like put on in the background. And um, it's uh, Andy Cohen and God damn it. Who is the famous CNN anchor? Uh, oh my God! Uh, what's his face? I don't um, this. Anderson Cooper. Uh, yes, Anderson Cooper, and like this dude, Andy Cohen is like like progressively wasted, and him and Andy Cohen, like Andy Cohen, tries to like make a subtle. He's like, "Well, I'm really, uh, I'm really feeling that um, the little snack we had earlier," and then Andy Cohen's like, "Snack? Don't you mean the shots we took?" 
<laughs> and then he's like, look at him. He's hungry. Yeah, go ahead. Eat your baby food. Show him your baby food. And then Anderson Cooper's like, oh, well, I... Uh, he pulls out like a packet of applesauce and he's like, this is what I'm eating because I haven't eaten and, you know, we got to be on air all night. And, he's, and so he's like, <laughs> eating this fucking applesauce through a tube. And by the end of it, this dude, Andy Cohen, has this fucking meltdown. He's just like wasted being like, and our fucking mayor, Mayor de Blasio, just going off. <laughs> <laughs> and Anderson Cooper's just grabbing him like, hey, man, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just looking this up on Google right now. Andy Cohn spoke out after a stupid and drunk NYE rant live on air. Yeah, Andy Cohn regrets one New Year's Eve dig, CNN says. <laughs> Fuck, I want to see that. That's funny. Uh, I mean, we could watch that in the bonus. We'll definitely get it. It was you on the Moment that. House show. Yeah, literally. That's how, I th- <laughs> that's how I thought I was on the Moment House show. I thought I turned into Andy Cohn during the Moment House show. Oh, did you watch Don't Look Up? I did. And? I thought, Thoughts? I, well, first of all, I thought I had potential to be a fucking classic, and I they ran, I could tell they ran out of money. No, what? Bro, get what this. What do you mean? Get this. Budget for the film, what do you think? <clears throat> $700 million. You're off by one zero. $70 million. Okay. 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 70 million bucks, okay. How much of that do you think they paid Leo? Oh, that's a good, I mean, that's a good question. 40? It's 30. And wow. then uh, Jennifer was 25. <laughs> okay, so most of the budget went to <laughs> them. To talent. And then Timothy Chalamet, you know, he was five. Yeah. So call it an even 50. So 20 Jonah million. Hill? Jonah Hill, too? Throw another five out. Yep. Uh, Meryl Streep? Another five. Just, you know, just, just chop the fives down. So by the time we came down to make a film about going to space and all that, on the head, what's his face? Plays Hellboy. You know that was a cool 500k. Just to yeah, yeah, he was great. Didn't even say anything. So you know what's crazy is I'm watching the movie. I'm like, why is this shit so familiar? And then I realized I auditioned to be Gen- uh, uh, who? Uh, how would you describe him? Jennifer's character, the the reporter boyfriend, the first one who like, oh, yeah, worked yeah. for that news station. I yeah. auditioned for that bullshit. Uh and I've never you know, obviously I've not auditioned for many things. And I like laughed. I was like, I would have looked like a little boy next to her. <laughs> that is why they <laughs> why? didn't cast me. Is she tall? I d I don't know, man. I I just think like that dude looked a lot older than I was. Um and I don't think I, I think if I had been casted for that role, everyone would have gone, is that, is that kid like 16? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you sh- should have grown a beard or something for the self tape, maybe. Yeah. Well, I, so I did, and, but here's what's crazy is that movie was in production for so fucking long. It was supposed to come out, uh, I think 2019. Because the production mm. got put on hold because of COVID, but they're still doing auditions. And I did the self tape in fucking New Zealand. No way, in really? Twenty, yeah. Holy shit! And then uh, I went in after when we got back. They were still like auditioning for it because it was like in limbo. So I went in and I did the read in person. Um, huh? Yeah, I was like laughing because I, 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 <laughs> I like started like remembering the lines. I'm like. That is even crazy. I can remember this shit. Um, <laughs> You're like reciting them as he's saying them. Yeah. Alina's like, what the fuck? Yeah. How do you know this? <laughs> yeah, I just rolled my eyes up in my head. You have to go yeah, on yeah. the Daily Rip. Right, my mom loves that show. <laughs> 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 What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? And then you go, oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, what I did do was I said them in unison and then I paused the film and I ranted for an hour about how it could have been me. Yeah, yeah. See, this is the way I would have played that character. Exactly. I think his motivation in this is a little <laughs> bit, yeah. Yeah. No, I thought it was a good movie. I, all my friends hated it. They were all like, you know, it's Redditor humor. It's all just, it thinks it's way smarter than it is. Like We had it, the climate thing and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I thought it was really funny. I thought the jokes were good. I thought the acting was incredible. Like Leo's character was great. Yeah, I think. Yeah, go ahead. 
I was going to say all the characters were great, actually. Jonah Hill, Meryl Streep. <clears throat> uh, I mean, they were all fucking great. I think I get what your friends mean by, like, Redditor humor. I think... So do I, but I just didn't... I'm not watching it that seriously. It's a comedy, so I'm watching for the jokes. I'm not watching for the narrative or for, like, the commentary on the climate crisis. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not. Did, did you ever see... Because like, I'm not smart. <laughs> I want to laugh. I want jokes. You know? I don't want to think. <laughs> um, what? Okay, wait, hold on. There's a... Oh, my God, I sneeze. Fuck. Shit! Like, it had a lot of... I, I just... Even, 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 like, the fact that they kept calling back to the whoever that was, the senator or whatever, that charged them for snacks. Like, just that that was a reoccurring theme. That even in the end, she's lying there and they're watching the comment. She's like, I just don't understand why he would do that. Like, that shit's funny. Yeah, I think what made it... Okay, so I think what gave it, like, the Redditor humor feel is, I think, the lack of budget. I think if those same lines were shot in a more expensive way, people wouldn't have thought that. Like, when Jonah mm. Hill had his, like, little asides, like, when he had those little digs, like, if the scene was set up a bit more cinematic and then there was, like, this, like, kind of, like, special, like, close-up on Jonah Hill where he, like, leans into someone and, like, says it and it's shot, like, fucking anamorphic, people would have gone, damn, this is, like, fucking funny. Like, the, the quality is there. But because they just had to, like, shoot it on, like, one red and, like, pan it around the room, I think that's what made it feel, like, kind of cheap. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. I, I, I genuinely feel like that's what took away from it in some ways and it's not their fault like they were trying to work with what they had and then i think some of the moments were definitely improv and i think that also made it feel like redditor humor ish where it kind of felt like people riffing and then in the edit someone's like dude this is funny let's leave it in and yeah i think in some way that felt a little bit cheap too like because i think there, there was probably like a time situation where they're like uh fuck, like, we can't, we can't really, like, run through this scene, like, over and over. So, like, why don't we just hit it a few times and you guys, like, go at it? Yeah. Um, I but, thought that no, the, I, I thought that, like, the Steve Jobs or, like, the Elon Musk character, you know, like, the tech overlord guy, I thought that was a little <laughs> bit of a miss. He didn't really a, convince no. me. It wasn't a great parody, you know? Like, Meryl Streep was supposed to be Trump or yeah. Trump, a Trump-like president, right? Mm -hmm. And... Like, Jonah Hill's whole angle on thinking his mom's hot was a play off of Trump thinking that his daughter's hot. And yeah. all the weird shit that Trump said about his daughter. Mm -hmm. So, like, I thought all that stuff was on the mark. Like, it felt like that was good commentary. And then the that guy's character, the weird tech guy, it was just like, I don't really see, this isn't really real. Who is like this? Like, they're yeah. all weird, but you didn't nail the weirdness of them. Yeah, I, I do feel like the whole, like, supposed, like, Trump person it, it felt super on the nose, but I think it kind of had to be. I think another part that made it feel really cheap and reddity is like all those fucking superimposed graphics. Ugh. Which ones? Like with the like live chat and then like all the, it's like showing tweets and, you That's know. That's the worst. I hate when, I hate when they put social media in a movie. Yeah. And then when the, and then when they like referred to Leo's character as like, astronomer i'd like to fuck and they like put those letters like on the screen like aila yeah. i was like oh yeah. god man yeah Fucking, you ran out of money one of the i did laugh i did laugh at the phrase astronomer astronomer i'd like to fuck <laughs> i laughed at that <laughs> fucking redditor oh peak, and and peak redditor and uh tyler perry and who was the kate beck was who was the female anchor the morning uh, show anchor yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Hold on, let me look it up God, they were perfect. They did, yeah, they did roles. really well. Yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> I think, uh, but yeah, some of that shit, that's the stuff where the improv felt like it dragged and like it, it, there wasn't a whole lot of intention. So I think it would have been better. I honestly feel like it would have been better if the, yeah, if they had like a little bit more accuracy on some of the characters and some shit more subdued, like, the Trump commentary, I felt like could have been more subdued. Like that to me made it feel like, oh, this is supposed to be like, um, you know, like it was trying to be a commentary movie, but 
whatever, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, one of the opinions I keep hearing is that it was good for the first hour and then it's, spoiler, fast forward five minutes right now. When they turned the planes around or the ships around. Yeah. That was the when the movie got shitty. Mm-hmm. And I think there's, yeah, I don't know, there's two ways you could view that. It's like them basically literally saying that's exactly what we do. Because that's kind of what the whole movie, like if you're watching it as a commentary piece, that's what it's implying is that yeah. we're at the point now that that's what we do. Mm-hmm. That's what America would do is turn it around in, in, you know, in, in, with a small chance that there's minerals or whatever that we can mine for profit for whatever these giant tech overlords, right? Mm-hmm. Or it's just a fucking movie or it's just funny. I think that's the part where it got mixed reviews as well as like the film at times felt like it didn't know what it was trying to be. Now, yeah, here's a hot yeah, take. True. Yeah, what? If the tech character, tech oligarch character, what if he was played by Ben Stiller? Yeah. Yeah, I love it. See. And was jacked as hell, too. Yeah. This is actually probably a pretty good time to transition to the Jeff Bezos picture, honestly. (laughs) Because just think of Ben Stiller looking like that in that role. Yeah. This is the picture right here. Look Mm -hmm. at this. Do you see that? Oh, wait. Do you see that tweet that said, uh, this is like every couple in Arizona? Yes. It's so funny. It's exactly what I was thinking when I saw this. So Jeff Bezos, for everyone listening, posted a picture of himself on New Year's Eve with his new wife. And he's just like, I guess it's 70s themed or something. Yeah. He's 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 wearing white pants and a crazy ass shirt tucked in and some heart aviators. And the caption says, we had so much fun last night celebrating with a crazy disco party with family. But the new year is also a great time to take stock and focus on personal growth, renewal, rebirth, (laughs) and paying careful attention to each moment of your life, the good and the bad, all of it, celebrate and grow. And then his wife is the top most liked comment. And it's, she says, I love you, baby, for every reason and no reason. (laughs) It's funny watching, because, you know, Jeff is not an influencer. So watching him like move through the stages of influencer, like as far yeah. as like his social presence now, he still is like a local. You know? Yeah. Like this yeah, picture totally. is very local. You know, like it it's not it's not done professionally. It's not done well. Yep. Um he's not trying to be cool. Mm-hmm. You know, like I think anyone else would like maybe have like stood still, no smile, like try to put on like a, you know. Like, a, I'm a dope as fuck presentation, but he's still yeah. in that stage where he's like, let's get a picture. Yeah, yeah, Yep. And then and then write some caption. Like, you could take this caption and you could stick this on a post from one of your friends from high school. You could stick it on one of the a Bitcoin influencers posts and it would work. It would work fine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Focus on personal growth, renewal, yeah. rebirth. He's not saying anything here. Everyone says this shit on New Year's Eve. Yeah. And then for his girlfriend yeah. to back it up and be like, I love you for every reason and no reason. It's like, well, how, why do you love him then? That makes no sense. <laughs> I'm also hoping that they, you know, Jeff takes the proper arc as an influencer. I really hope he doesn't pitfall into a couple's account. Oh, could you imagine? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wait, elaborate on that. So, you know, I'm hoping that like he starts to figure it out. And then, you know, maybe he starts like, he starts dressing a little designer, you know, stops, yeah, stops yeah. smiling in pictures, starts standing still. <laughs> maybe he fucking on occasion, you know, he might stand up a little bit and just, you know, like. Oh, yeah. Okay. Throw, just throw a casual like ice in my veins. Or like start posing like this. Yep. Yeah. Looking down at his shoes. You know, um. You know, that's yeah, that's it's like it's like so proud of the SpaceX team for another successful launch of Blue or-, or I mean Blue Origin. So ex- so proud of the Blue Origin team for another successful landing of our shit. And he's like this next to the team. <laughs> nah, man, you still you got to think cooler, man. The caption has to be Blue Origin going up all year. <laughs> Rocket ship. <laughs> That's See, I'm kind of thinking I'm kind of thinking he's still got his PR team writing the captions cuz they have to go through like 
layers and layers of legal review. Yeah. But he only sends them one picture. And they're uh, like, Jeff, can you please start like looking up in these pictures? He's like, nah. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, either way, that's the arc we hope he takes. I, can you imagine if he takes the other way and he's like, I'm announcing that me and Mrs. Bezos will be now sharing our Instagram. And you're like, oh. Yeah. And, then, and, and the, and the <laughs> what's the name? The Bezoses? Uh, yeah, you know. Or it's just Bezos, Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> and their profile picture is like them two on a white psych with like, you know. You know, just like it's yeah. just, it, you know, and then all their pictures are them like eating fucking yogurt and yeah, and going it's to like farmers markets and shit, and you're just like, oh, come it's on. like Sunday with my ride or die. You're like fucking, and it's them at a pool in Tucson. It's every day with your ride or die, Jeff. Yeah. So, but you know, I love you. Imagine, I love you for every reason and no reason. I feel like that's insulting. <laughs> I love you for. I can't even think of a reason right now. <laughs> Maybe that's her way of saying, you know, it's just uncontrollable when she gets around, you know, Jeff. Yeah. I just I just love you. Can we pull up that picture of him on the yacht, too? Do you see this paparazzi oh, shot? Of course, man. Of him? Paparazzi shot. Fuck out of here. He hired that shot. So then he's getting better as an influencer. <laughs> oh, my that's God. the next stage. <laughs> yeah, bring that shit up. I mean, we joke about him being Jack, but he is fucking yoked now. Yeah, bro. I said at a show, and I sometimes I wish I recorded it just to like stamp that, like I, you know, I I was like, <clears throat> he's working out, man. And I said, mark my words, this dude is going to eventually look like the fucking Ultimate Warrior. You just watch, and like he's going there, dude. He's huge, yeah. man. Yeah, he really is. I think we have to go to the bonus now, but. Yeah, I'm down. Um, what are we at? Hour 15? Yeah, let's cruise with the bonus. Uh, by the way, everyone, uh, if you're subscribed to the newsletter and you're still listening. Um. <laughs> this is, yeah, sorry. This is this is him right here. Uh, that's that's not the best picture. There's another one of him standing like more to the side. I'm, I'm, I mean, but I'm, I mean, you can see, you can see, look at the, look at the vascularity there. Our, our boy is wide, dude. He's like 60, is he not? Yeah. And he's, what is he taking? Well, he's ready for his W. <laughs> he's ready for his fucking AEW appearance, man. That's yeah, next. Is that next, you think? He's going to do a wrestling appearance. Yeah. yeah. That would be so sick. For all you Amazon workers in the audience tonight. Yeah. Your boss is here. <laughs> he comes out. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah. Jeff. <laughs> That's his secret move. That's his secret move. His opponent, he's got his opponent on the ropes and he just laughs near him. <laughs> <laughs> Their skin. skin just. Oh, the guys are there. G forces. <laughs> God damn it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks for thanks for listening sorry thanks for the for remote guys, today yeah. but we had fun anyways and we're going to the bonus to discuss so much what else dude. we got to discuss today more jeff bezos old gary um, v video old V-Con. gary v video oh oh fuck okay we're gonna watch this dan bilzerian video in the bonus okay it's new his new house in vegas you know how he like moved out of that house in la or whatever yeah everyone's like oh he said now it's the wish house so he bought a place or maybe rented it i don't know but it's fucking crazy and this there's this video on youtube it only has a hundred thousand views of this guy taking a tour of it and it's ridiculously funny so we're gonna watch that in the bonus too um so we'll see you guys there appreciate it